Good morning. Good morning. Having been entertained and educated by General here, I'm not sure I'm able to keep the pace and keep <laughs> you as focused, because I have learned, and I'm sure you have learned as well. I've been asked to speak to you this morning. The general theme for this conference is education access, quality and equity for African youth. For mine has been a little limited or restricted to youth perspective on developing an attitude for self-reliance. Now this morning I'm going to be speaking to both the youth and their parents. And grandparents, thank you. <laughs> I love it this morning, it's so entertaining. My name is McDaniel Powell, as I've been ex I mean, introduced. I work for my government. I'm proud to say that I'm a civil servant. I'm also a consultant for the International Trade Center, where we developed um, a program aimed at enhancing trade in Liberia. The program is codenamed Trade at Hand for Market Women to enable them get their goods, their farmers and market people get their goods from one point to the other without getting spoiled or not being able to get to the goods at all. I'll say again, as I said back home, all protocols observed. Greetings from the Republic of Liberia, Her Excellency Madame Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, our president and the entire population of Liberia. I bring you warm greetings. I'm very honored this morning to have been extended an invitation to serve as a keynote speaker at this all important event where the finest minds in Africa and the world meet annually to discuss the development of Mama Africa's status in terms of technology and to find other ways forward aimed at improving the standards of education for her people, especially the youth. Access to education in Africa can be discussed from many angles. In many places, government devote lots of time and resources aimed at constructing educational facilities However, the cost of education is high in terms of the poverty rate in many parts of Africa. Low salaries paid to teachers is also a major obstacle to quality education. When teachers have to leave the classrooms several times during the academic year because of prolonged unpaid salaries, then the youth in some countries are bound to lag behind in their educational sojourn. This leads to shuttle dreams and lost aspirations. Lack of access to quality education is a key driver behind the large number of youth participation in violent and conflicts around Africa. According to a youth fragility assessment report or conducted in Liberia by USAID from January to March 2009, poverty, ignorance, disease are three great cultures of the human race which stuck the Liberian people, especially the youth population. The illiteracy rate amongst young people in Liberia is very high due to lack of access to quality education, be it formal or technical. The findings of the assessment further show that the long years of civil war fueled an already ignorant society. An epidemic of war fueled ignorance is reflected in the educational statistics, but given meaning in the eyes of the 23-year-old, 
trying to learn the alphabet, and the tears of a teenage mother who did not understand the consequences of her action, and in the blind faces of a traumatized youth who are young only in body. Since 1990, the concept of education for all has focused on achieving universal primary education while focusing on access and quality issues. Education in Liberia has the same challenges as those in many developing countries, but there are also more acute challenges resulting from the 14 years of civil war and from the underlying economic and social causes which resulted from the war. However, the lack of access to education can be mitigated by effective education intervention designed to address specific patterns. The challenge is to make such education country-specific, subsector-specific, and linked to outcomes that optimize the prospects for an enhanced stability. In a post-conflict country like Liberia and many others around Africa, education is a resource that can mitigate fragility and enhance social cohesion, reduce the risks of civil unrest and violent conflict. Education is, an effective, is effective in overcoming conflict Perceived inadequate educational service can become a grievance that exacerbates conflict. Education system can be a prime site for corruption and are a suitable place to establish transparency. Political manipulation of educational provision and content may increase the prospects of violence why peace education can have positive effect on students' attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, whether it is formal or technical, education breeds a high level of self-reliance. Unlike in the developed world, where young people are challenged by the educational system and their environment, African youth are never given the opportunity to think outside the box, whether in the classroom or at home. It is always the teacher telling the students what they should be doing, or parents encouraging their children to stay with them for the longest, sometimes until they're married. I realize that the fact that we are not challenged to do better on our own, most often we're unable to critically think and analyze situations. This is a question I'm posting to all of us here. You don't have to put your hands up, you don't have to answer. But when does an African youth become a, an adult? When the African Union, according to its declaration, calls a man at 35 a youth. At least the United Nations says 24. At such an age in the developed world, I see entrepreneur, I see chief executive officers, I see high level decision makers. As an African who has passed the youth stage, I have never allowed myself to be spoon-fed. I have challenged my lecturers from high school days. And as a result of that, for many other reasons, five years ago when I was at age 24, I moved from being a middle-level manager to now a junior manager and moreover, an IT consultant. Something when you refer to a person as a consultant in our setting, they expect to see this huge 
gray-headed man with a wealth of experience. So I'm always overlooked when they say, that's our consultant, everyone's like. <laughs> but it's true. Parents, you need to encourage your children to do better. Giving them the access to education, sending them to school, is not all to it. Now, self-reliance is a major challenge amongst African youth. It's something we have to deal with. Quality education breeds confidence, which eventually leads to self-reliance. There are many times that we envy successful people, one way or the other. Some people say that envy is ignorance and that we must accept whatever comes our way, whether good or bad. I don't know. However, I believe that self-reliance is built on four main pillars. Now for the youth in this audience, and maybe for the parents and grandparents, please take my little knowledge as to what I refer to as the driving force behind self-reliance. Take the blame. That's number one. Take responsibility for the things that you're at fault for. Look after your own work. Plan your time wisely and be self-dependable. I know you've heard this before. I'm re-echoing it to you. Number two, be informed. If you need information that you don't have, look for it. Ask. Get the factual information you need to make smart decisions. Because knowledge gives power. When you are ignorant, you're at the mercy of others. Three, know where you are going. Set tangible goals. Have a well-defined plan. Be proactive to the world around you. Go for it and get it, but don't let it get you. And four, decide for yourself. Always think for yourself. Then depend on others for the choices you have to make. Because if you do, you will always be unhappy. I was once told that the earlier you accept who you are and live with it, the longer and happier you live. But if you continue to live in denial, if someone told me that McDaniel, you are short, and I know I'm short, <laughs> and I continue to ask myself, why am I short? Come on, why others are tall? Whenever that is re-echoed to me, I feel bad. But if I accept that I am a short man and go up or come down, I'll remain short till I die. I mean, if you said it, I'll laugh about it and say, well, you are tall. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by giving you this little short story about self-reliance. Now this goes to all of us. Maybe some parents or grandparents here today need to hear this. And you could even improve your level of self-reliance. A very successful businessman was turning over the gear shift or the ruins of his business to a very smart but inexperienced young man. A little intimidated, the young man sought to gain some parting wisdom. What is the secret of your success? He asked the man. He replied, good decisions. A little put off, the young man persisted. Yes, but how did you learn to make good decisions? 
He instantly replied, experience. I understand, said the young man. Getting a little frustrated by his short and very precise response, the young man asked again, but how did you gain the experience to learn how to make good decisions? Without hesitation this time, he replied, bad decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow participants, we can learn self-reliance through the consequences of the decisions we make. As the old people say, experience is the best teacher. Young people can only rely on themselves if they're educated. The lack of access to basic education breeds the lack of confidence. And this makes us, or the youth, vulnerable to those who take advantage of them and turn them into war machines. As we deliberate here today and for the days ahead, it is my fervent hope that these discussions will go beyond paperwork and translate into concrete interventions for young people all over Africa and in the developing world. God bless Africa. God bless the world. Thank you.